Oh, thank you. I love yours too. It's the Listen, one I bought you last year. I remember that, yeah. You <laughs> haven't bought me anything, you. I always buy You don't even Christmas buy me a presents. drink. You never oh. come out for a drink with me. That's why. I've got to buy one if you're never there. Anyway, Listen, what's going I've on I've got then? to tell you about these girls. They're loads of fun, and they tell me that they really like guys to be hunky and muscly. Well, here they come. The three ladies. Give them a very big welcome, everybody. <laughs> Wow. I love all these set routines, you know. I mean, they must They're really good, aren't they? Standing behind there, getting their they act They work together. on them for hours. Who's first, anyway? <laughs> Donna's first, and when she spoke with a plum in her mouth, she got custard all over her face. <laughs> Helen's arrived as herself tonight for a change, and Julie believes that teachers turn into monsters at night. They're all embarrassing stories, which we'll hear very shortly. Meanwhile, give them a nice round of applause. Nice to see you, girls. <laughs> Yo, and here come your three guys! Well, they got dressed up to the nines to be on the show tonight, and uh, Steve's first, eh? Yes, and I think Steve's a real fruity sort of guy. Dean had a short, sharp shock on Christmas Eve, and Mo had a blue Christmas, but it should have been a white one. There you are. Give him a nice round of applause. Brilliant. <laughs> now, let's, uh, let's find out more about these little embarrassing stories. We've got um, Donna, first of all, who spoke with a plum in her mouth when she got custard all over her face. It's a lovely smile you've got there. Tell us what happened that day. Well, I was in a club and we went to a game and it was called Get Your Gums Around My Plums. <laughs> 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 so I got up and I had this new velvet dress on and I had these big earrings in and I couldn't get to the custard where the plums were and the bananas because of my earrings, so I lost. <laughs> oh, what a shame. Well, you're looking very elegant tonight. Nice to see you. Uh, Helen there. Helen arrived as herself tonight for a change. You often sort of other people do or something? Well, for my job, I'm a promotions representative, so I have to dress up from day to day in different things, like a fairy or a clown or Santa Claus, whatever. Yeah, the guys you know? have the same problem, actually, <laughs> every now and then. So I thought it covers me for a change. Dead right. Nice to see you as well. And Julie, on the end, Julie believes that teachers turn into monsters at night. I could have said a, the same about one or two of my teachers at school, but what are you saying? I was on a school trip, and we're, all the girls were messing around, and teacher was monitoring so he was outside well he didn't know that at the time and then he did the toilet so I went out and it was absolutely pitch black and I just felt this hand going along my shoulders and I just jumped about six feet shouting my mom mom help me help me <laughs> <laughs> it was really mm. scary nasty stuff and anyway thanks very much for coming on the show I hope you enjoy yourself there you are the three girls thank you <laughs> right lads as bold as you are let's go to Steve first of all the real fruity sort of guy tell us more Steve well, I had some uh, problems with some melons. <coughs> uh, when I was on holiday in Crete, we, uh, on the way back from a heavy night out, we hired some jeeps and we found some uh, melons by the side of the road. So we picked them up and took them back to the villa, the apartments. Mucked about them in the pool and in the apartments and that, had some games. And then uh, I woke up first thing in the morning and uh, I couldn't move at all because they put these massive basketball-sized melons all over me because we had loads of them from the side of the road. I couldn't move at all. <laughs> You and your mates together, I don't know, fun. you get us some, some right tricks. You take a note of this, girl, girls, because this is what he gets up to. we got Dean there in the middle, who had a short, sharp shock on Christmas Eve. Dean, what happened on Christmas Eve, mate? Uh, good night out with some friends. Came home, a little bit peckish after a few drinks. Decided to make some toast with a 12-inch carving knife and a frozen loaf. Slipped on the kitchen floor with the knife in my hand. Landed on it and just stuck it clean into my leg. Ooh. You've never eaten toast since? Can't stand it. <laughs> I can't bet you can't. Uh, and Mo, Mo had a blue Christmas, but it should have been a white one. This is where you uh, apparently were in some place and you were going for a raffle or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in a fairly large pub, actually. About 500 people there. It and, always um, happens in pubs, doesn't it? You know, it's <laughs> always. Yeah. And um, the MC called out number three, 300, and I'd, I think it was 371. Um, so all my friends jumped up with me and um, they carried me to the stage, you know, because I had 371. So I was collecting my TV and what have you, and the MC said, let's have a look at your ticket. It was a blue one, it should have been a white one, so I was booed off stage, oh, you know, no. booed and Well, you've had the last laugh because you're on television tonight, OK, that you can't get any better than that. Thank you, fellas. Give a nice hand. Good. Yeah, I wonder if anybody's got anything to hide. We'll find out with this one. Anything to hide? Mm. You know, skeletons in the cupboard type yeah. stuff. Well, if your latest date insisted on hooking you up to a lie detector, 
and wanted to ask you absolutely anything. Would you refuse, would you go along with it, or would you react in some other way? So if your latest date wanted to put you on a lie detector, what would you do? Would you refuse, would you go along with it, or would you go some other way? One of those answers now? Let's see whether you're truthful or not. Uh, let's come to you first of all, Helen. You would go along with it, so really you're saying you've got nothing to hide, or are you a good liar? Well, honesty is the best policy, so I'd rather tell the truth. You never tell them little, little porkies? Well, that'll work, yes, but um, not the man. Tell the truth. I see. Uh, Donna, you've got nothing to worry about then. You'd, you'd go along with a lie detector? No, because I'm quite a good liar. <laughs> oh, you are? When not was... only white lies. Right, when was the last lie you told? <clears throat> uh. Quite a while ago. About two seconds ago. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Steve, uh, you've gone for exactly the same answer. In fact, all the lads have. Uh, they have nothing to hide. You go along with the lie detection. Most definitely, yeah. I could. I give them the answer they wanted and speak properly afterwards. Probably. Have you ever had it done to you? I mean, a lie detector. You know. Um, not as yet. No. 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 I wonder how subtle this lot are as well, Bruno. Do you tell many lies? No, none at all. Would you refuse a lie detector? No. You wouldn't? Do you want to hook me up to one later? I might just do that, Ooh, actually. I'm going to ask you some, uh, some questions and see if I get any revealing, truthful answers. Your friend has just played a leading role in a play which you thought was absolutely terrible. So what do you say to them later? Do you say, darling, you are wonderful? You know how they do in the theatre. Darling, wonderful. Or don't give up on the day job or something else. Now, just before you answer, what we're going to do is we're going to ask uh, a very famous face what she thinks about it. Here's Ruth Maddock. Well, Bruno, as you and I know, you can't go to somebody's dressing room and say, darling, they were wonderful if they weren't. Neither can you say, don't give up the day job. But what I would tend to do is I'd go into the dressing room and say, darling, how do you feel? And then if I was asked what I thought of the play, then I'd give my opinion truthfully and tactfully as I possibly could. Now, I wonder what your contestants think. We'll find out. Meanwhile, thank you, Ruth. They are Ruth Maddox. Very nice. Truthfully and tactfully, she said. As for our contestants here, let's uh, go to Steve. Y you would say that uh, your latest date was wonderful, even though she was terrible. Yeah, I'd let them carry on and make them fool themselves and then laugh them afterwards. Well, you've just contradicted what you were saying on the previous question because you said that you, you'd take on a lie detector because you were somebody that spoke the truth and had nothing to worry about. Well, it's a different question, really. No, it's not. It's it not is. a different question at all. <laughs> Mo, can I ask you, you would uh, do what? You would say, don't give up the day job. Yeah, well, you know, you've got to look after them, really, so I'll just speak the truth, really. Do you? Yeah. yeah. I think it's wise to do that, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really. At least, if you wanted to speak the truth, or at least try and help them in some way. I reckon that's because of his disastrous date on stage when he went up with that raffle ticket and everybody <laughs> booed him off. He wouldn't want anybody else to. Yeah, well, they certainly told him the truth that <laughs> night. Dean? You can always rely on a northerner for an honest opinion. Yeah, is that true? Yeah. I would go along with that. I think Northern people, generally speaking, are very honest. In fact, all the girls here um, feel the same way. Don't give up the day job. Who haven't we spoken to? Julie? Um, are you quite honest like that? Yep. If they wanted to keep going out with me, don't make a fool of me. <laughs> so you're right black and white, you are, are you? OK, yeah, you know where you stand with Julie. Right. I tell you what, I've been told never to talk to strangers. I wonder if this lot would. At the theatre, the person next to you drops off to sleep and puts the head on your shoulder. It's happened, it's happened on aeroplanes and all sorts of places to me, and they end up dribbling, you know, really. <laughs> you know, end up dribbling like. What do you do? Do you, do you wake them up? Do you ignore them or something else? So, somebody at the theatre, the theatre, the person next to you drops off to sleep and puts their head on your shoulders. Do you wake them up? Do you ignore them or something else? One of those answers now. Very good. Donna, what would you do? You would wake them up. I would wake them up and say, look, you're dribbling on my shoulder. <laughs> I've just bought this suit. <laughs> would you share your popcorn with them? It would be nice, maybe. Yeah, I bet you would, <laughs> right, fine. Dean, let me ask you, you would uh, do something else? Get me home back, give them a really good shake and tell them we're about to crash. <laughs> what a strange guy you are, Dean, it sounds. <laughs> And Steve, what would you do on this one? You'd wake them up. I think it's really, it's only fair to wake them up so they're not so embarrassed about it. I'd wake them up first. If I didn't, if I did it after that, I'd chuck a drink over them probably because I'll do like my sleep. You've got a right one in Steve here, I tell you. <laughs> you be very careful uh, which way you choose now, girls, because we've come to that moment in the show when you've got to make your choice. So is it Steve, Dean or Mo? Press one of those buttons for those guys now. <laughs> 
guys, it's time to flex your muscles for these girls and use them to press those buttons and choose your woman right now. Wow, what muscles. Which muscles? Oh, thanks. <laughs> They're all there. We'll see you right after the break. Don't go away, OK? See you there. Show. Here we are on Love at First Sight, looking for true love and romance, of course. That's why you're all here, looking as wonderful as you are. We've got to start off with Julie. Which of these three guys did you like in a big way? <laughs> all right, now you've gone for Steve. Give us a good reason why you chose Steve as opposed to the other two. I went for his earrings so I could borrow them. <laughs> <laughs> well, having said that, Dean's also wearing earrings. In fact, Mo is the only one that's not wearing earrings tonight. So, I mean, the earrings are quite big, actually, you know, in a way, aren't they? Mm. Do you like fellas and earrings? Yep, definitely. It's really do, sexy. Do, do, just one earring or...? Two. Got to have two. One's not good enough? No. Right. Well, let's see if Steve uh, went for Julie and let's see if you're going to be swapping earrings later on, I wonder. It was a broad smile. That was great. That was absolutely. Why did you fancy Donna, Steve? Well, she's looking frilly tonight, and she can thrill me any time. Oh, <laughs> I see. I mean, it's very nice gear, though, isn't it? Yeah. it suits her. She knows how to present herself, doesn't she? Well, Donna, did you choose Steve, Dean, or Mo? <laughs> I tell you what, Donna, if you swap earrings with Steve, I can see him wearing those. If you didn't write. Why did you like Steve, then? Well, he said he didn't lie, and I said I was a good liar, so I thought maybe we could get together and he could test me out. Well, you're not lying now. I mean, you do like him. You're not going to change your mind, are you? No. No, not at all. Well, you're going out this evening, and uh, you're all dressed up and raring to go. We'll let you know where you're going very shortly. Meanwhile, moving on to Dean. And uh, one of these three girls was yours, but which one? Ah, Dean went for Helen. Why? Well, she says she likes being a fairy. I'm a bit of a clown. I think that's a good match. <laughs> you think so? You're a bit of a clown. You like clowning around? Yeah, just a bit, yeah. Yeah, OK. Well, watch him with his 12-inch knife and his uh, frozen <laughs> loaf of bread. It could be lethal. Helen, did you choose Dean? There again, it could be Mo, or it could be Steve. You know, he's already taken. <laughs> Mo, your main man. Why did you like Mo? Well, he said he had the wrong ticket, and I think that would be the right one. So. Great. Do you like the way he looks? Very smart. Is he macho? Yes. Is he honky? Yep. Is he adorable? Yep. Is he marriable? Well, <laughs> think about that one. <laughs> Mo, did you choose Helen? Could this be love at first sight? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> All right, Mo, well... You don't need uh, anything but Helen. Forget the TV set, forget all those bad memories. Why did you choose <coughs> Helen? Well, she usually dresses up as, as somebody else, um, but today she said she's dressed up as herself, so she looks good. Do you think so? Yeah. Have you got dressed up yourself before now, Mo? Well, this is just my casual words. Is it? <laughs> I see. We'll believe you, mate. Well, anyway, you're going out tonight. You're going to a restaurant as well. We've got to bring you right here now and get a big cheer from the audience. Come on, Mo and Helen. Come and join us. Oh, okay. First embrace, marvellous. OK, a little hug now whilst Helen tells you where you're going out tonight. We're sending you both to the Jade Garden Jazz, a very distinctive Chinese restaurant. Slowly drink in the friendly, lively surroundings as you choose from a wide selection of fine, fresh foods and authentic Chinese cuisine. As you eat your way through the thrilling banquet, you'll see this is a place for whining, dining and dancing, but don't forget to take time out for romancing at the Jade Garden Jazz. Yes, plenty of it. Romancing, that's what it's all about. Let's bring it, all the old-fashioned stuff back. The car is waiting for you now. We'll see you next time. Give a nice round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Mo and Helen. And now, Steve and Donna. Here we go. Right, so, thank you very much to Julie. Thank you also to Dean there in the middle. Thanks for being good sports. As ever, they get the prized Love at First Sight passion pin and another round of applause. Great stuff. Thank you very much. 
We're going to have to keep those earrings very still <laughs> while Helen tells you where you're going. You're going to Mr Ali's Tandoori to sample some of the delicious delicacies on the extensive menu. You'll be sure to get a warm welcome at this friendly family-run restaurant. The food here is mouth-watering. There's tandoori and curries to excite you, with salads and kebabs to delight you. We know you'll have lots to talk about over your scrumptious meal at Mr Ali's. Very nice indeed, OK. And incidentally, when you finish with the earrings, uh, <laughs> could you give them to me, cos I can use them as hubcaps on my can. car. <laughs> Billy tonight, and she can fool me any time. So... Well, he said he didn't lie, and I said I was a good liar, so I thought maybe we could get together and he could test me out. <laughs> Steve is from London and Donna is from Bolton, and here they are on Love at First Sight! <laughs> How are you then? All right. Yes, thank you. Very good. So, is this uh, love? It may be. 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 It will be. I think it was a corny little pun there. That's right. So, you've enjoyed your Maybank holiday so far? Yes. Very Walking nice around the, uh, the streets, looking a blonker <laughs> like me, I suppose. But uh, hopefully, luck's on your side because it's prizes next. And here comes the love board. We'll see you right after this break. See you. <laughs> Some prizes for our uh, special couple here on this theme night. Donna, I'm going to ask you the first question. Let's see how much you know about him, all right? What kind of party would you most like to go or go to on, on a fine May night? Would it be skinny dipping on the beach? Would it be barbecue in the back garden or an open-air disco? Right away for us, Steve. Would it be skinny dipping, a barbecue or an open-air disco? As quickly as you can. I know what you're looking over there. Yeah, look at our lovely audience there. You see, you see them all smiling at you? <laughs> yeah? OK, and what do you think is put? Skinny dipping. No! <laughs> well, it's not that funny. Uh, an open-air disco. Yeah? Which member of the cast of the Darling Buds of May would she most like to meet? Would it be David Jason or Catherine Zeta-Jones? Would it be uh, David Jason or Catherine Zeta-Jones? Give us a quick scribble there. <clears throat> She's not writing with the pen, she's writing with the uh, sovereigns on her finger, I think. The answer is... David Jason. David Jason, yes! Yeah. What's his favourite day of the week? His favourite day of the week? OK, Steve, what's it going to be? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday or Tuesday? Or Wednesday, and what do you think? Saturday. You think it's Saturday? <laughs> no, it's Friday. Any particular reason why? Payday. It's payday. Oh, it's right. time. Oh, go along with that. What would she order as a pre-dinner drink in a restaurant? Write it down, Donna. Now, a little time to answer. A pre-dinner drink in a restaurant. The answer is... Coke. <laughs> Coke? Yeah. No wine. And then another glass of wine, and another bottle of wine, and then and going from there. Only one love heart so far, ladies and gentlemen. Is he the kind of man who'd have a name for his car? Is he the kind of man who'd have a name for his car, yes or no? Hang on. Steve, tell us. Are you the kind of guy who would have a name for your car? And what do you think he's put? Yes. Yes! <laughs> so what do you call your car, then? Honey. Honey? Yeah. What sort of car is it? RS Turbo. An RS Turbo called Honey. Oh, really? It's very fast, very sweet. Well, that's... Unusual name for an XR3 or an RS Turbo. <laughs> Which of these ways of cooking potatoes does she enjoy eating most? French fries, sauté or baked? French fries, sauté or baked? And the answer is... French fries. French fries, yeah! Yes. Three love hearts! <laughs> and here comes uh, tonight's love trip. <laughs> Win this love trip and you'll be whisked off to beautiful Bermuda. Surely the most perfect of spots for a romantic holiday for two. With its harbours and bays, sandy shores and rocky coves, Bermuda will provide the perfect backdrop for your personal voyage of discovery. And at night, as you sip a rum punch and gaze into each other's eyes, what thoughts will be you thinking of your loving, languid love trip? OK, so there you are. That's uh, the star prize, the love trip tonight. And there are the love trip tickets. <laughs> 
with Helen and her best wincy yet. Now, you've got three hearts, which means 12 seconds on the board. And you're going to fire, are you? I certainly am, yeah. OK, so if you want to take position, literally, hand around the lure throttle, 12 seconds start now. It's a £250 Long Jeans gold plated classic strap watch with date and centre second Long Jeans means long life. And with scratch proof sapphire glass and a water resistant to 100 feet, it's bound to last a lifetime. Very good, yeah. I mean, you know, only decent prizes on this show. Pal. Good stuff. Right, so you've got nine seconds. Five for the next one. The latest grooming kit from Remington. With a smooth and silky automatic polish remover and manicure set, it's a perfect prize for any girl's grooming. Okay. Oh, a heck of a concentration on your face Ooh. now. We've got to go for the last one. Keep away from the broken heart, the love trips on there, and all the other prizes as well. Just good luck to you. When you're ready, go for it. that doesn't do you any good at all. There you are, the broken heart. But give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. That's the way it is. The watch. The watch is superb. Yeah, watch. You're yeah. going to have to argue as to who's going to have that one. that one. Where is the love trip? Well, they got three hearts. If they'd got one more, Bruno, they could have tried for number four, and that's where it is. Number four. Yeah, that's where it stays. Is there a romance here, then? Definitely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right? I think so, yeah. That's great. And when are you next seeing each other, then? He's going to ring me. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. Give him a bell. Right, great stuff. Well, the very best of luck, anyway, in your new relationship. There you are, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much. Meeting on love at first sight. That's exactly why we're here. I'm going to get changed now, but enjoy the rest of your Maybank holiday. We'll see you next time on Love at First Sight. Good night. <laughs>